Hey, I'm Derek Diedrichsen for Tiny Yellow House in conjunction with Make Magazine. Today, we get a little sexy. It's the Tiny Yellow House Swimsuit Edition. I'm not kidding. Cameraman Steve Sherrick right now wearing nothing but a Speedo. Seriously. So as the thought of that turns you green, fittingly, on the show today, we bring you a green house. So I get an email a couple months ago, uh, a gentleman by the name of John Grover happens to be a horror fiction author and a guy I was familiar with, I've actually read a couple of his books. He emails me and says, I came across your book, saw one of the designs in it down at Big Lee Swamp and I'm looking for a greenhouse slash writer's retreat. So I said, game on my friend. This cabin is multifaceted, greenhouse and a writer's retreat. As to how we built it, what I try to do anytime I build something is use stock lengths of lumber. You save yourself a lot of cuts and you save yourself waste. So for instance, this back wall here is exactly these studs that are eight feet long. The entire array of front windows were all bought off Craigslist. These are Anderson windows, they're six feet tall by almost 30 inches wide. Each of them are like $12 to $1,300 per window. I got the whole set of them for $425. So it pays to shop around. This here is poly roofing. You could find it in a wide variety of places. Very easy to install. It's held down with hex head screws and neoprene washers. Uh, as is the guiding principle in this project, I built this greenhouse so as to utilize eight foot stock standard size sheets. So I wouldn't have to do any cutting and we wouldn't have any waste. The sheathing here entirely on this cabin is sustainably grown Vermont white cedar. When installing it, always keep in mind with tongue and groove, tongue goes up. So when it rains, you're shedding the rain, not collecting it. We're not trying to build a swimming pool here. That would be very, very bad. Now me being a thrifty son of a gun who likes to salvage things and find things on the side of roads and turn them into other things, this window once upon a time was a stereo cabinet. So. Uh, Long ago, it probably sheltered, you know, Bang Tango, Trickster, and Enough's Enough vinyl albums and all those other really terrible 80s bands. As for the door, yep, found her on the side of the road. As Confucius say, one man's trash is Deke's building supplies. By the way, side note, this is the very first time here in the show where we've had enough of a budget for a second camera. Thank you, Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> all right, enough of that, let's go inside. Ah uh, yes, Casper the friendly host here, working on my tan. Very much so needed. As for the rafters here, they actually uh, are two by fours because they span such a short distance. It's about six feet or a little bit under that. In this case, they're attached via a bird's mouth cut. Now there's a bunch of methods as to how to cut those. The tip is, once you get one of them done right, assuming your walls are all plumb, straight, and even, just use it as a template, trace it onto the others, cut them, and just go down the line and start nailing them in place. It's really easy. And the sealant here, this is silicone, go to town, I'm telling you. You want to, you know, caulk up every single gap you can find so as to make this more airtight and retain all the heat. If you want to grow vegetables in January, it is possible. Ugh, 75! <sighs> Got to pipe in some Rocky IV music. Hold sound fire. The floor here, we used a lot of dark crushed stone, I think three cubic yards of it shoveled into a frame I built out of pressure treated wood. The darker the stone, the better because it absorbs the sunlight coming in here and at night slowly retains and holds that heat, prolonging the elevated temperatures in this greenhouse. Now in terms of the interior decor, when plotting how I'm gonna decorate a place, I asked myself, WWWGD, what would Whoopi Goldberg do? <laughs> no, not really. That's kind of the look we have here. It's kind of like a Africa Bombada meets Clive Barker. And in a way, it's what I was going for. It's the whole dichotomy of cheery atmosphere by day, creepy, somber, inspiring writer's retreat atmosphere by night, so John can work on his novels, which are pretty twisted. 
Ah uh, yes, by the way, the voodoo owl, making many a cameo in the Tiny Yellow House episodes. Go back, watch them 10 or 20 times, see if you can find them. Because here's an Ikea basket that someone was getting rid of a long time ago. These things are actually really cool for hidden storage, space efficiency, and, and so on. Not really meant for being sat on though. What happens if you sit on these a bunch, you know, you use them, they start fraying over time, over a couple of years. So what I did was, took some uh, scrap cedar that I had from a project that otherwise would have been thrown away, and I cobbled together, make this simple cover here that fits atop this basket, and voila, you have a sturdier top on this thing. You can sit on it, and uh, it's, you know, it's a little more stable in terms of putting your, your drinks on top. Well, that pretty much does it for the tour, and for myself as well, as there's three triple Baconators waiting for me over the catering table and a defibrillator. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm Derek D. Diedrichsen for Tiny Yellow House. We'll see you next time.